What's up, peoples? What's up, Evelyn peoples? It is Wednesday, and Wednesday is time for the Evelyn People Show. And tonight on the Evelyn People Show, we have a fabulous, fabulous, spectacular guest. Um, she's Amina Mose Gordon. I met her in college at the Michael University College. Um, I can't imagine how much group work we did together back in the day. Um, but when I asked her to, to tell me a few things about her, the very first thing she mentioned is that she's a Christian. That's the very first thing she mentioned. So I said, I said, I mean, uh, give, give me the accolades and I, I'll call you Miss Mosley for the fact that you're, um, you know, so she said, she's a Christian. Um, she's a wife. She's a mother. She's also the assistant principal for a high school in New York, um, and she is wrapping up her thesis for her doctorate at this time. Um, so this is this is somebody that has their head solidly screwed on, all right? And she's a no-nonsense person, but she's down to earth, and she is just one great individual. And without delaying any further, I'm going to have her join me and see if we can shake this up a little bit. Mrs. Hi Mosley. everyone. How are you? How are you doing? Well, here's what I here's what I do just for kicks and giggles. You know yeah. how much I be posting um all these Florida temperatures this time of year. What's the weather like up there right now? Um I plead the fifth and I refuse, <laughs> as you could see. Oh my god, turtleneck t-shirt, right? Turtleneck towels. It's cold. Wow. It, it was cold today. I think it was like 30, a high, well, it was 41 on on, on paper, but it was not 41 in person. So, wow. yeah, it, it, it was cold today. Okay, well, yeah. Mrs. Mosley, we have a lot of things I actually want to cover today. Um, yeah. The first one being, I, I'm, I'm going to address your school first, and then we'll, then we'll actually get into the, the poetry reading. Um, how many kids do you have in your school? Well, right now we have over 1,100 kids. It's a middle school, um, 1,100 kids right now. Um, there have has been a lot of um, movements because of what's happening. Parents are finding that if they go to, some of them are moving down south, some of them are moving to more suburban areas or, you know, a little bit more stability. Listen, this is New York City. We have over 1 million kids, um, right. you know, on record. So it's one of the largest um, public school systems in the country. Now, so, New York was one of the first states to get locked down. Um, back oh, in yeah. March, I think New York, New York ran out ahead really early. Yeah. Um, so they were one of the, the first states to get locked down. Now, how much teaching time did you lose um, at that time? And uh, how long did it take you to achieve some amount of normalcy? Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if I can use the word normalcy anymore. But no. right at the brink of spring, <laughs> March seventeenth, um, I remember we got the uh, memo that you know all schools were closed, and on the twenty third we launched fully remote. It was something that no and one is it was. Twenty third of for. March. The twenty third. So we got one week to sort of prepare the students and the teachers. Um, a lot of us had to jump into this new platform for right. some schools they weren't using it. So it was a lot of new things being put into place. And I mean, the students, the teachers were struggling because uh, uh, yes, it's a first world country, but you know, there's still some traditional methods used. Um, right. And then the students in some ways also suffered because they had to figure out, we had so many tech issues. It was unbelievable. Wow. Like I had to step up my technical game. 
um, and step in when needed to. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, what percentage of kids now at that time was it a hundred percent online, or did you have some in school taking place? So initially, 100%. it was a hundred percent online. Okay. Now, yeah. there there's a new order that just went out very recently. Now, yeah. before that time, when school reopened, I'd say recently, um, what were your percentages online versus in school? Um, so we had, uh, well, <laughs> at the time, the thing is that they still can go, they still can switch. It's called a learning preference. They still can switch from in-person, which is blended. So some right. days they're in, some days they're um, um, at home and then fully remote. So they had that choice. So our numbers just kept climbing, kept climbing. And as an uncertainty, our school year was pushed back. Normally it starts like early September. Mm -hmm. The students never started coming in person until October 1st. Like mid-September was when we started to um, have students go fully online. So um, students still keep switching over. So right now we're like 80% on climbing um, of okay. those who are fully remote. Um, I'm trying to stop my phone from doing something it wants to do that I don't want it to do here. Okay. Um, now, I spoke to Mr. Latry, um, Frederick Latry from, from, our, from our university. Oh, yes. Um, who was the principal of Lennon High School in um, Mr. Latry, yes. <laughs> right. Now, he had at the time, or he had, or since COVID and this new order came into place, he's had about 60% absenteeism. Mm -hmm. Majority of his kids actually are missing. Now, he, he said they did a drive. They went out. They looked for kids. There were a lot of kids that were pregnant. There were a lot of kids that were working. Um, is there any amount of absenteeism that you're seeing in your institution? So New York is um, very diverse. So yes, we have people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, yes, we had, uh, I wouldn't say 60% because of course there are systems in place to support students, but things move slowly, not as quickly as it should have for a first world country. Um, so we probably had like, 40% who we, you know, had to sort of engage and get them going and pushing them to come online. Right. Um, at some point, we didn't get everyone, but we got majority, well, let me say more than 60% online, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that, you know, we have a program where the government, the city sent out like 300,000 um, iPads or devices that were Wi-Fi enabled. So we have that um, system here. Now, right. I know based on my conversations with colleagues back home, and we know how it is, um, you know, the financial backing for that to happen in Jamaica is not there. Right. Um, there is some here. We, we, I, I remember we're talking about over a million kids, but we only were able to give out 300,000. The schools had to fill the other gap, wow. the, uh, the, the rest. And, and I'm sure their budget so, did not include yeah, that when they made the budget last year budget and 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 there are there were budget cuts across the city because of you know so many everybody lost you know the it was just a citywide breakdown of things so um yes we we ended up like my, my principal though she was very forward thinking so she was strategic in securing some devices um but that took a while for it to actually because no one was in the building so she was forward thinking she saw the vision and she moved accordingly so that was one good thing for us. We still have students who are, um, you know, requesting devices. You know, devices are, they, they, they break. So things happen, but okay. not as bad as back home, you know. But we did a lot of parent outreach was at a different level. Everybody had to just pull together and support each other with parent outreach. Awesome. Now, Anne-Marie Easington-Porter has checked in. She's saying, hey, Anne -Marie. Pick up yourself. <laughs> yes, girl, big up, no? big up. <laughs> she, she, I think, I think Anne Marie was in our, was in our, was yes, in our group, yes, right? So we yes, did a lot of yes. group work to get a video, Anne Marie. Now I think about oh, it. <laughs> yes, we did a lot of group work to get a big up yourself, Anne Marie. Um, now, there's one more thing I want to look at real quick. When I, when I made the post today that mm -hmm. I was going to have you join me, um, someone made a, a comment on, that post i'm going to mm -hmm. read the comment they have and i'm going to okay. ask you what your thoughts are on it now okay um, when i made the post i said we were going to talk about education we we're going to read some poetry and all that and it says if we only could see education as a means to an end a means to overcome a means to succeed a means to grow and develop 
and defeat the negatives being said and a means to take us um, out of the slums, I think is what I should have said, and to the top me, uh, as a means to direct us out of trouble. What are your thoughts on that as far as education is concerned? So um, on my official work email, there is a quote by Derek that says, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. And one of the things that we need to recognize is we have to make it accessible. One of my, I mean, I taught for four years in Jamaica before I came here and the difference in um, New York is still not where it should be, but the difference in how I see that systems are put in place. So mm -hmm. in my role as AP, I'm also uh, managing the special education department, which is guided by a lot of federal um, laws. And we are held accountable. So the documents that teachers are expected to write, the individualized education plan for students who may have any kind of special needs, it's considered a legal document. Right. Um, in Jamaica, we, we had teacher training for special education. You know, we were aware, we were made aware, right? Even 20 years ago, we did this program, but the system that should be in place. So because of that now and my background, my um, research that I am working on will be looking at how students of color from immigrant communities are able to access college education and their perception of what it means to be college ready. Um, but the idea is that, you know, anyone who comes from minoritized community, I don't use the word minorities anymore, minoritized right. communities, tend to have this, um, people see us in this deficit, um, with this de through this deficit lens, right? Oh, they're gonna have so many challenges. Oh my gosh, they have to pay this tax, that tax, whatever. You know, you, they have three strikes against them um, in terms of being black, in terms of having an accent, being an immigrant, like so many things. So my research is looking at the assets that we get. They call it the, um, the cultural wealth that we get from our community. Because one thing I could tell you about, um, students of color, people of color from the African diaspora, which includes the Caribbean, is that we do know how to push ahead. We mm -hmm. do know how to be resilient. I we agree. know how to get over that hurdle, coming way back from how many years ago on those ships coming over the Atlantic. We have had a history of being resilient. So my research is looking at how this sort of innate resilience has been able to start, start shifting the lens and the narrative because everybody's telling us how it's going to be so hard there's going to be challenges and barriers when i came here i went to college and when i went to college on the first semester yes i was a teacher yes whatever the case is but when i came here the resources that i saw because i had to deal with so many resources there was one library I had to go to to get stuff done when i came here because there were so many resources like i i just soaked up everything right so having had to deal with the hardship back home you know they have the song in new york if it can make here you can't make it anywhere i feel like if you can make it in the caribbean and come here you better be able to make it because you have the resilience man we have to jump over some hurdles back home remember cap days martin come again <laughs> remember cap days cap days oh my god no and you are right and um even the comment that i that i just read that was that somebody cited earlier um uh, my my response to that was that the education has to be met with opportunity. And I think oh, as yeah. far as the Caribbean is concerned, it is mm -hmm. that the opportunity is not there. We have a whole bunch of underemployed individuals there. They're sitting on these degrees, but yeah. there's no opportunities for them to apply the degrees. There's no opportunity not for them to go out and actually demonstrate what it is that they have been trained to do, what it is they're good at. So you have degreed individuals underemployed oh, yeah. doing jobs that require no amount of training at all because that's the only opportunity available. Best believe. And we have so many untapped talent that's just sitting down, not doing anything. Um, it, it, it's, you know, one of my, one of my goal at some point is to my, on my bucket list is to at some point be able to, you know, work with, uh, some program that will be able to support because uh, you, you remember we we have in our um, national anthem and in our pledge to serve um, and yes I'm here and you know na Alessia is good right. but the point of the matter is that sometimes you leave but when you leave mentally physically everything 
you got to find a way to help and to do what you got to do back home. So we have the untapped talent there. We got to try to reach back and see if we can, you know, support and, and push something. Right. And something. we have done that. You and I have done that. We've collaborated oh, yeah. on a couple of things to do that. Um, because I, I never taught for a day. You said you taught for four years before you leave Jamaica. <laughs> I taught on teaching practice. And before I go any further, I have, um, I think I'm pronouncing it, Swin Walker. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Tanisha Baxter checked in in England. Hey, it, it, it has to be like 1 a.m. in England right now. Um, <laughs> Carrie Ann Booth has checked in as well. I got uh, Just want to shout out our Michael yeah. peeps that are there. Um, but, my comment. yeah, but it's like we, we you have, you, I agree, you definitely have to try to help in some capacity. Yeah. Um, you are familiar with the work that I do with Andrew, another batch mate, and, and the soccer team that he has down there. You know, yeah. we, we have to try and help somehow because, like you said, it is in our national anthem. The fact that you yeah. physically live outside the country has nothing to do with what you can actually contribute to the exactly. country, exactly. The exactly. people that are there are doing the work they're putting. It's so funny to me, even to hear you call me Prezi still. And hear <laughs> people like Latry and all these guys, they still call me Prezi. They still call me yeah. Mr. President. And I'm like, guys, seriously, like, I haven't thought. You guys are the ones that are in the school, making the changes, helping kids. So, you know, I appreciate being called Prezi, but in real life, you guys that are out there that are still changing lives. I still remember... Michelle Johnson has checked in as well. Hey, I still Michelle. remember my grade five teacher. I still remember my grade six teacher. I still remember these people and they're the ones that actually shaped my life. They're the ones that shaped my way of thinking. They're the ones yeah. that shaped my perception of life and ultimately mm -hmm. what I became and who I am becoming still. Yeah. You know? But well, you right. know what, Martin? You know, yeah, so, right. sorry to, um, to just go back to what you said about education. We have to remember, listen, Rick and Morta, in the building, education, there are some of us who have to deal with that. That's where electric comes in. That's where I come in. Michelle, you know, all of us who are in these um, capacities within the classroom, technically. But then you have education that happens outside. The work that you're doing right now, being able to empower, it, it, it's more than just academic. There's a social piece. That's empowerment piece. Community workers, you are doing that. That's a part of education. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, we can't stick to the, you know, version of saying, yeah, you know, that's classroom, whatever the case is, but Education happens inside and out. It, it, that's why I talk about the lived experiences. It, it's an amalgamation of all of those things coming together to make sure that that one person is a whole person, not just, well, I can answer questions from a textbook. Beyond right. that, I throw in a classroom or throw in your own people. Can you represent yourself? What can you do? What can you offer? So what mm -hmm. you're doing is also education. Like, and I appreciate that. I do. Um, let's see. <laughs> Michelle Johnson has checked in. Alfonso Christie. Um, has checked in. Hey, um, Chris, oh, that was my team. Yes, yes. big up. <laughs> Mr. Christie says, hi, I'm you know, my TP partner. Bless <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, uh, so days, I'm telling you, man. You guys coming in and keep the comments coming. If you have any questions for Miss uh, for Mrs. Mosley or Kiko, as we lovingly call her. So yeah. whatever, <laughs> about her. All right, Miss Mosley. Thank you for, for everything you've enlightened us to as far as education is concerned. You're welcome. Um, but you are on the Evelyn People Show. And on yes. the Evelyn People Show, we yes. have to read some poetry. We have to get into it because that is our vehicle. That is a vehicle that we're using to empower. So mm -hmm. without going any further, what are you going to read for us today? Okay, let me do the teacher mode. From our book, <laughs> <laughs> Love Life Confrontation Expressions, Selections from the Chronicles of a Black Man. So listen, there were some poems that were deep, that were steep, <laughs> that I, I'm like, let me leave that one alone. Um, but one really hit me was Transition. Transition. That's on page 61, yes. Transition on page 61. If you have yes. your book out there, uh, flip to page 61. Uh, Mrs. Mosey is going to read Transition for us. Whenever you're ready, ma'am. All right, Transition. Frustration expressed with a pen, the absence of peace, the absence of zen. Insecurity in one state of mind, questioning the motives of the other side. The sadness that persists. Absence of laughter, absence of bliss. The silence that permeates nothing said in this dormant state. The ever fleeting clarity, confused by my own reality. Saturated as with showers, one more inch and the flood devours. 
Retreating to calculate the sum, sourcing the disturbance of my equilibrium, taking note of the areas of change appraising that which remains, pondering each and every word, what's said versus what's heard, reducing the unspoken need, not of the giver, but of the one who receives, anticipating the resurgence to come, reanimating where it all began, changing the tactics to meet the goal, maintaining peace within one's soul. This is a six-year-old poem, dude. Where you got some hindsight or something? Yeah, you know, you know, po that's, the, 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 the poetry is poetry is timeless. Poetry is like, yeah, that's so true. That it's like so the old true. song you hear that's still that's still relevant. No, that's how poetry works. Um, and I, I want to tell you something. I want to confess something. I don't remember. I remember writing this poem, <laughs> but when you said this is what you're gonna read, I didn't remember what was in it. But you were correct. Oh Lord, it is a very deep poem, and it, it has is. a lot of application. So. Let's do this. The poem seems to be going through the stages of grief. There are several mm -hmm. different steps that the poems go through. So we're going to take the verses kind of like one at a time. So I'm going to reread verse one. And mm -hmm. then I want to explain to our viewers what is happening here. So the, the, the poem is transition. If you're just joining, it is on page 61 of my book. The, it's in the background here as well. It says transition. Now, the first verse says, Frustration expressed with a pen, the absence of peace, the absence of zen. Insecurity is in one state of mind, questioning the motives of the other side. What's happening here? So, obviously, there's a lot of internal conflict, turmoil, confusion, disappointment. Um, you can see that there is um, an unexpected realization. Um, there is this what is happening here the possible betrayal possible hurt possible betrayal possible hurt mm -hmm. indeed now okay let's take it a little further verse two and three gives us more insight into the situation i'm going to read mm -hmm. the word well, and then i want you to just elaborate on what's going on here now mm -hmm. um the sadness that persists absence of laughter absence of bliss the silence that permeates nothing said in this dormant state the ever fleeting clarity confused by one's own reality saturated as with showers one more inch and the flood devours now what assumptions can be made about the nature of the relationship of the two people in this dynamic so I mean, there's, we talk about saturated as with showers. That means something is full to the brim, right? It's like about to, to run over and the person is still holding back. So, you know, when you're at the early stage of some relationship and you're not really sure how this will play out, I never expected this. It's like you were on your utopic experience and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, this happened. So I get the, the sense that this is very over. early on. Yeah, but the person never get the memo. <laughs> the person never got the memo. So the other person may be acting like, okay, this is me, you know, this is how I roll. And the person's like, what? Or to the left side, like, what is this? Where um, we so we, I, yeah, I sense some, some emotional immaturity, some emotional immaturity um, in terms of how to handle this. Um, what is this? And, you know, just do, what do I do? Where do I go next? What is this? I'm glad you said emotional immaturity. And uh, Lati B says it, it's just love life confrontation expression. Kerry Booth says it's deep reflection. And so yeah. Walker says, indeed. Now, uh, there's a certain amount of restraint or mm -hmm. composure that is, that is exercised throughout the poem. What mm -hmm. aspects or what lines in the poem reflects this composure? And why is this important for a relationship that is at this stage? So, so look at the second uh, verse now. It says, at uh, the last line, nothing said in this dormant state. And then we can go back to that third verse, last, the last line. It mm -hmm. says, one more inch and the flood devours. So this person is dancing around and, and walking on eggshells because they're not sure if their response is going to go left or right. Is it that they are holding back themselves or is it that they just haven't reached the point where they can actually 
you know, have that difficult conversation because listen, here I'm I'm uncomfortable right now and, and how I feel, I just have to put it on paper. I can't even say it to the person or express my true self. And the point of the matter is this person may be having their own assumptions and not they're not sure of what is happening from the other side. It may have been some kind of misinterpretation of the behavior. You know, sometimes we have expectations of people, you know, we have our list. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. they don't check the box, and when or when they check the box, and realize wait, we have to erase that. Right, I mean, you, you, I you thought yes. the box was checked, but it wasn't actually. Yeah, checked. right. You said, "What happened to this box?" But you checked it, you know. So that kind of, um, you know, like it's not the same. Oh, wait a minute, this 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 person just just changed, but they're not saying anything because they know they they're not too sure if they should say or they should just wait and watch the ride or see what's happening. That's why so they just they just being composed about it. Yeah, man. Hold back myself. Hold back myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this, this this poem is pretty deep. It's it's pretty. It has some intense oh, yeah. aspects to it. Why did you choose this poem? So, I'm naturally an introvert person. Thanks to V. Michael, when I say that to some people who know me, post Michael, right? They cannot believe that I was an introvert person. I still like my corner. I still like to be in a smaller crowd. I don't. Nobody believes but, me. I'm shy either. Nobody believes. Yeah, me. like shy, yeah, that, but, yeah, but Michael, Michael destroyed that. That, that we can't we can't claim that anymore. Cause Michael, listen, Michael had a system that ha- that you didn't have a choice. So for me. Having difficult conversations, even up to recent, like uh, even in this role, you, you you need to have difficult conversations with people from all walks of life, race, and sometimes it's hard, you know. But I'm coming from a place where I used to just sit down and probably cry it out, or not say anything, and not really try to understand what's happening. So when I saw this transition, it, it it's like it embodies my own journey from being this quiet, shy person, and probably people who know me from before can attest to that. To being a little bit more outspoken, a little bit more listen, unafraid. I'm I'm not going to, you know, allow certain energy to destroy who I am or to disrupt, you know, you know where I am. Now, um, Sway Walker says that there, they, the two people in here seem to not be at the same level of communication or expectations. What do you think? Oh, definitely, definitely, because I think this person who is going through this turmoil is more of you know, the other person probably is a little bit more overt, and this person is like, "Wait, what do I say? What do I do?" Probably the person is a free spirited kind of person who will just say what they need to say, but this person is not at that level yet. Definitely, I agree with you, Shane. I okay. agree with you. So, am I saying that name wrong? Is it Shane Walker? You see, I'm saying. Know. No, oh, okay. You said she. Well, Anne Marie says she doesn't believe me that I'm not shy, but I'm not even going to address that <laughs> because I'm too shy to address that right now. I'll come back to that later. <laughs> um, now, there is some indication of hope for the future in this poem. Um, what in the what indication of hope um, is there, and what application does this have for relationships in general? So. Look at the last verse. You can see that um, the person went through like a few stages, right? Like mm-hmm. hurt, you know, like denial. I'm not sure what this is. And then they start processing and they start realizing that. And this this shows this shows some sign that the person is probably on the right track. Right. Um, so going through these stages and seeing that hope, like anticipating the resurgence, changing the tactics to meet the goal. So this person is reflecting. Right and accepting, and from acceptance, then you get to hope. Mm-hmm. Now, my this is my thing. Change is good in any relationship because without change and discomfort, you can't have any growth. Right? right. But you also have to be aware. You have to have like your your, your change compass up as an individual because sometimes change can go in the right direction, or change can be counterproductive. It goes in a different direction. Right. Because some people change on you, and it's not for the better. <laughs> <laughs> Even in a relationship, right? You have to know, you know, are you at the point where you have to take the space and the place where you are, if you are willing to take that, if you're willing to go on that journey with the person. You know, some people, you see them go through some some, some experiences with people and, you know, they help the person, but some of us, we can't handle that. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, so you have, to, you have to realize, you have to be able to identify when, you know, something is broke. And, oh, and yes. if you're fixing, you need to fix it. And if it changes, you need to change it. But you have to be able to identify when fixing it is not an option, when replacing yeah. 
is the only option, is what I think. Now, the, the poem is transition. Um, what roles does transition play or what role does transitioning play in the success of a relationship? Or can you just kind of hit the, the cruise control button and everything just kind of fall into place? You know, leave nothing for falling to no place. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you, you, you have to be aware. And let, let me tell you something. Change, this is what I think change is. Change should be um, enhancing something that's already there. Like, like you see some potential, right? It's already there. So change somebody who from, 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 from left to right, that complete 180, and it's a 180, not 360. All right, I'm a math person, so I have to be <laughs> mathematically correct. If you go 360, you go back in the same place. So everybody right. out there changing the narrative. But 180, some people you just can't. And some people are just, 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 just. a wise person once said that you can't throw a white pot on a blackbird and expect the bird to be white. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Kiko. Good one. So the bird, goes, the, the bird is going to shake off the powder and it's going to be exactly. a blackbird to me, right? Same blackbird. Exactly. So you cannot, you know, there are times when transition change is good. Enhancing what is already there is good. But for you to change, and, and what, 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 what's something that we need to be aware of is to be able to check it. Because sometimes we go into a relationship or enter relationships, whether it be personal ones, family or whatever, even family sometimes, um, friends, close friends. You have to be able to deal with the change. And sometimes if the change isn't, you know, taking you to a place of, of growth and betterment, if you feel uncomfortable in any ways, you have to check in with yourself. Okay. Now, Very important to check in with yourself. Let's look at this now. This, this, is, a, this, mm -hmm. is, a, this is a poem. Intellectuals get it. It's all high flown. It's all very spooky speaky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, Are you right? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Now, can a poem like this actually work in the real world? Now, you have a disagreement with your significant other. You guys are at the point where y'all are not even speaking to each other anymore. You come home, they act, they write this poem out or type it out or leave it or email it to you. Can something like this actually help you understand what's happening or what they're feeling? It's definitely a conversation starter. Definitely a conversation starter. And it, it definitely, you know, reveals more than what the person is probably actually saying because <laughs> this this will let you know that listen you know this is probably my my, my cue to have a conversation that the person know this is where we are this is what's really happening this is what i'm going through um communication it man it's it, it's something that you have to learn still learning still learning my husband and i going 20 years next year we're still learning to learn to communicate and deal with the changes because you know yes 20 years but that doesn't guarantee that you know everything and you're going on every journey but um in, and we, we're also learning to be better at communicating we still fight we still fall you know we still have disagreements but at this point in time you know you have to and it, it, it doesn't have to be 20 years sometimes right. it can take less for some you know everybody go on their unique journey you have to know what you're willing to go on you know you want to go through the ebbs and flows of craziness um right. and reach where you want to reach but yes this definitely would open that that door man and, and allow for conversations to happen mrs mosley it yes, sir. has been oh my word i'm <laughs> you see you see you're right you got me mrs mrs gordon mrs <laughs> gordon <laughs> Yes, I apologize. <laughs> I, I, I know we've been, you know, me as Mosley for 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 a long yes, time. So I, 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 get, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. A while before you became Mrs. Gordon. Yeah, well, yeah. Gordon, it it was great having you here with same me. Same here. Same here. Um, I'm glad you were able to take the time to come on and join the fun. Um, yeah. your insights were. Were, were very clear. I am sure there's someone out there, there are people out there that will be able to learn from the insights you have. Um, and it was very informative as far as what the schooling system in New York is going through right now. Any parting words before we leave? Um, yes, two things. One, listen, buy the book. <laughs> All right. Um, sometimes you just need that sit down read you know, with some champagne or red wine, whichever you choose, you know, whatever your drink of choice is. And, you know, sometimes you just need to just see, you know, from a different lens. You're in front of these cameras and these 
use technology all the time. Just take a break and a step away from that. And everyone keeps safe out there. It's getting crazy. We are back to being closed down in New York City. We went over the mayor threshold of 3%. So today um, in the afternoon, it was announced that New York City, all New York City public schools are closed for now. Um, hopefully after Thanksgiving, we could go back. But people, wear your mask, be safe, social distance, stop breaking the rules. Do the right thing. We at some point we need we need to be released from this this mess. So I know, right? yeah, keep the peace and be safe. Take care of each other. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for joining the evening people show. And you yes, take sir. care of there, my friend, and stay warm, okay? Whatever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, peoples. Uh all right, peoples. That was Miss Amina Mosley Gordon. Um and very insightful. Thank you for joining the show today. I hope the viewers learned something from the show. Um, and like she said, very insightful as far as the, the, the things that we looked at, the poem in the book, transition, transitioning in a relationship, transitioning in personal relationship, transitioning in a professional relationship, transitioning in spiritual relationship. So if you haven't, go out there and check out the book. Um, besides Fontana Pharmacies in, in Jamaica, it's on Amazon, just about everywhere else. And you know me, I don't have time to dilly-dally. I'm not going to stall. I'm out of here. Thanks for joining. Join me next week when we mix it up again. Thank you.